Ladies and gentlemen, hello. My name is George Baker and the doctor is in today. I serve as adjunct associate professor of organ at SMU in Dallas, Texas, where I teach organ improvisation. Well, you ask, why am I wearing this stuff? Well, these props are simply to remind you, if you didn't know already, that I was a practicing board-certified dermatologist for over 30 years. But that wasn't the only thing I did. I was also continuing as a musician, as an organist, composer, teacher, etc., etc. So I've had a dual career, and some might call me Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, or Dr. Jekyll saving your hide in dermatology. Anyway, if you came to see me as a patient, you would see me much like this. These are magnifying lenses we call loops. Stethoscope you recognize, perhaps you would get a prescription for a cream or a pill of some sort if you needed medicine. And today I want to give you prescriptions, not in medicine, but in music. And I want to show you how to get out of a prison of a key that you're in and you can't seem to get out of it. You got to go somewhere, you got to modulate, but how do we modulate? Well, I'm going to show you a couple, actually five different little tricks to very simply modulate and get out of the key prison that you find yourself in. You painted yourself into a box and you can't get out. Well, my friends, you can, and I'm gonna give you five keys today that are very simple to show you how to get out of your little jail that you've created for yourself. Okay, here we are in my street clothes. So I know I've covered this topic before, the idea of the jail or prison that we paint ourselves into, getting into a key and not being able to get out of it. But nevertheless, I think it's important to talk about this again, because just a few days ago, I was teaching in SMU. We were working on a Gregorian paraphrase working with the Carrier from the Mass Orbis Factor. And that's a common theme that Jean Anglais would give to his improv students. And it was one of the first themes, in fact, that he gave. And let me just play it for you. Beautiful, beautiful, rich, rich with all sorts of different fragments that one could use to make an improvisation. But, uh, and all sorts of little fragments you could use to develop that theme in your Gregorian paraphrase. Anyway, so we did the exposition and got into the central development section and ended up in the key of F, which is the relative major key of D minor. Okay, so that's a good place uh, that we could start the development in, F major. So let's beat up on F major a little bit. If we're stuck in F, how do we get out of F? Well, I want to give a couple of little tricks. We've got F chord. So we're going to do one of two things. We're going to take that high note, the soprano, and go either a minor st uh, second down, to the E natural or major second down to the, the dominant seventh or the E flat. 
Okay, let's first start with the the E flat, which makes a, the F7 dominant seventh chord. So we got where can we go from there? Well, first of all, circle fifths. We can do like Bach. Use a circle of fifths. Okay, that's easy. Is that the only thing we could do? Of course not. Here's another option. we're using the principle of an augmented sixth where that that note there becomes a D sharp and it goes up it resolves up to the Uh, uh, resolve to the to the minor. Here's another. In this case, your bass is going to go up minor second to that F sharp. Here we are again, F seventh. Oh, that bass goes up a little bit, and then guess what? We're on a diminished seventh chord, and as Dupre said. You can go anywhere from anywhere as long as you start with a diminished seventh chord. Same thing for the symmetric chord of the augmented triad, but we'll do the augmented triad some other lesson. So, where can you go from there? That diminished seventh chord, anywhere, right? So once you get on that 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 diminished seventh chord, etc. 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 Royka list Bach. You can go anywhere from any key from that diminished seventh chord. Okay. Now, let's this time use the minor second going down from F. Remember Vidor Takata? Anybody ever heard that piece? What does he do? He's got the F chord and he's F chord becomes a four of the new key, the new key of C. You could continue on that away. You could go up the bass to the F sharp, and then you. And you have a half diminished seventh, which etc. 
cetera. So. Another thing you could do when here you are. Remember Frog Corral one? Well, we just put it in C. about that so with that half diminished if you just go down another then we find ourselves again to that diminished seventh and we can go anywhere okay I think that's enough that gives you a few tools five tools in fact starting with the dominant seventh or the major seventh and from there, you can go to a whole, whole, whole bunch of places, infinite number of places, in fact. So guys, one thing I'd like to say is, like many medicines, for example, in dermatology, I might give you a cream for a rash or an itch that you had. It doesn't fix the rash or the itch like the snap of a finger. Guess what? It takes time. It takes time and it takes effort. You gotta put the medicine on for it to work, duh. Can't just sit in the medicine cabinet. That's called patient compliance, which is a big deal, a big problem in American medicine with hypertension and diabetes, that type of, that type of illness. But anyway, so the point is that you gotta give it time, you gotta work, you gotta practice. And these little tools that we talked about today, we're just starting from F. How about all the other keys, the other 11 keys? So you, you should transpose these little exercises in all the other keys and practice them and take time. Experiment, have fun with them. Uh, see where it takes you. Go on a little journey, but spend some time because it's not just an instantaneous fix. There's, there's really no instantaneous fix in this type of thing. In fact, if you ask Shautunamir, how long does it take to improvise, to learn to improvise? Uh, Monsieur Tunamir. He might say 12 years, he said 15 years to somebody Longley would say the same thing. It takes a long time to learn how to be a master of improvisation, but to learn to improvise, it may take 10 seconds. Guess what? We just improvised a little bit. So you can improvise in 10 seconds. It doesn't take a lifetime or 12 or 15 years. So. So chin up, take heart, have fun, work, experiment, and you will reap the benefits. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention, and we'll see you in micro lesson number seven. But wait, one more thing. For those of you who might be interested in learning improvisation more seriously, and you want to expand the tool belt that you have, I'd like to give a shout out to my workbook for organ improvisation. And at this point, I'm gonna put a link up. So if interested, you can purchase it. It's still $50. It's in PDF format only. And please check it out. I think you'll like it. I hope you'll like it. And I hope you'll find it very, very useful for your career. Thanks again.